Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the ratio test. So here's the assumption. We assume we have a sequence, a n, where every term is non-zero. So a0 is not zero, a1 is not zero, a2 is not zero, and so forth. So we'll break down the ratio test into three parts. So part A, and we look at the limit in each part, as we're about to see, as n tends to infinity, of a n plus 1 over a n in absolute value. So a n plus 1 is the term coming after a n, so think of this as the ratio of consecutive terms of the sequence in absolute value. So if this limit is strictly larger than 1, the implication is that the series of a n from 0 to infinity diverges. So it's that simple. Part b, if the limit as n tends to infinity of again the ratio of consecutive terms in absolute value is now strictly less than 1, then the implication is that the series converges absolutely. Which means that the series itself converges and the series of the absolute value of a n also converges. And part c, we can probably guess now, if the limit as n tends to infinity of again a n plus 1 over a n is, well the only other option, of course if you're not larger than 1 or less than 1, you're equal to 1, and if that's the case, then the test fails. Which means that when in the limit the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n is equal to 1 as n tends to infinity, the series of a n may either converge or diverge. When the ratio in the limit equals 1, anything goes. So one question is, well, one simple observation, you can see why we call this the ratio test as we look to the limit of the ratio of consecutive terms in absolute value. So it's clear why we call this the ratio test. A natural question to ask is when should we use the ratio test? And the answer is the ratio test in order for it to work, therefore to return a ratio on the limit that is larger than 1 or less than 1, needs rapidly growing functions, which are of the type exponential functions, factorials, and n to the n. So if you see an an, any such function, a good bet is to use the ratio test. So use when an contains, so parts of an contain exponentials factorials and or n to the n and by exponentials of course we mean 2 to the n, 3 to the n and so forth an exponential where the base is larger than 1 a factorial quite simply n factorial but of course you could have other factorials you could have two n factorials and so forth and so the key point is never use the ratio test if you don't have one of these three things an n to the n as part of a n and factorial any type of factorial should do or an exponential if you have smaller functions in terms of order of magnitude when n is large such as power functions logarithmic functions the ratio test will return a limit of 1 and the test will simply fail. So always keep this in mind. Use the ratio test when parts of your sequence contain 
an exponential and or a factorial and or an n to the n term. And that's it.